thing on? I think it is. Okay. Hello, everybody. It's uh, Jochen Heiden, and I'm looking at the screen that I shouldn't be looking at. I should be looking at this screen. Hold on. Let me move this over. There we go. I think this is right now. Let's try this again. Hey, I'm Jochen Heiden, and I'm back with another live video. So this isn't intended to be an update of my campaign because I'm actually on January 20... Oh, no, not January. February 27th in the campaign, and my videos are like on February 20th. So I got about a week delay here. So it's not my intention to update you guys on where we're at with the campaign, but I want to take a deep dive into my aircraft production and my research and development engine stuff and, and my overall aircraft strategy here. Cause to be honest with you, I'm looking at what I'm doing here and I don't know if I have the right setup. So I don't expect to get all the answers on the live stream tonight. The intention of this is to basically make a video for people to watch even after the fact and take a look at what exactly I'm doing and tell me if I'm screwing this up or not. Cause I, I might be. Mm. So just a warning, I mixed the drink tonight. It's my my uh, world famous gin and tonic, but it's a little strong. So if I start slowing halfway through, that's why. So let's talk about my research and development plan first. All right. I'm going to sort this by aircraft type. So what I'm doing here is a bit of a departure from what a lot of other Japanese players do. What they tend to do is focus heavily on the a6M2 roof, which is a float plane. And from there, they instantly go over to the uh, A6M5 and they more or less skip the A6M3. I'm not doing that in my campaign because I am taking some cues from what I learned a long time ago from Desert Wolf and I'm going for the A6M3 Alpha. Okay, so that is, well, here, let me show you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it up on tracker here so we can look at it. Let's compare it. Uh, aircraft comparison. This is what I'm trying to get right now. Uh, let's see. You, uh, Japanese Navy fighter. A6M3 Alpha. I want this aircraft because it is a, a substantial leap from... The A6M2. Now, granted, it's not an A6M5, and let's compare those two. A6M3 Alpha. Okay, no, A6M5. So a lot of people go for this, okay? And you can get it pretty soon in 1942 if you go heavily into it. But I wanted to go with this because I, I got some cues from Desert Wolf here, and this fighter does seem pretty good. You can get it pretty quickly, all right? And on top of that, it also converts into the A6M5 later on. And as you can see, it, it is a pretty decent fighter. It doesn't have armor, but it has really good long range, which I think is going to be important for me later on. The, ex the normal range of this thing is, is impressive. It, it's definitely better than the M5, and it's more maneuverable. So I want to get this aircraft because I think it's going to suit my needs better. Uh, but to get it, I have to get the A6M3 first. And that aircraft is not a great leap from the A6M2. So the M2 is on the right. The M M3 is on the left. So uh, the range is actually less on the M3 than the M2. Similar uh, maneuvering though. And it is not carrier capable. So my intention here is to not actually use this aircraft at any point. I'm going to go from this and swap over to the A6M3 Alpha. And not even produce this aircraft. I'm going to just soldier on with the M2. Now, I think a lot of people may disagree with that move. You know, and, and you know, you'd probably be right for doing it. And I have six factories devoted to that. So I don't know if that was the right decision or not. I'm, I'm going to go with it though. Uh, I have one factory set to go for this A6M5D, which is basically a night fighter because I know there's going to be some night fighter squadrons that I get that they're hard to convert in and out of. And I want to have this 
and basically every night fighter I can get because I'm pretty confident that night fighting is going to be a bigger issue later in my campaign. So I'm actually going for every, more or less every night fighter that I can. The Judy, the, the Irvin, what else? Uh, this, this, uh, this Dina, I believe is a night fighter as well. This might be a night fighter also. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going heavy into night fighters and that's about five factories. And some people are suggesting that maybe I shouldn't use my factories for night fighters because they're not that relevant. Uh, that is definitely something that I'm happy to listen to. So if you agree with that, let me know. Going pretty heavy into the Sam because this is a late war uh, Japanese uh, fighter for their carriers. I got three factories on the Jill, okay? And I'm not going to produce the N1 Jill because it uses an HA44 engine and I don't intend to use that engine. So when I fully research this aircraft, I intend to swap it over to the B6 N2. Where is that at? Let me show you that. The B6N2 Jill, which uses HA32 engines, which I've already got in production. Okay. Uh, I'm not swapping that over, by the way. I'm just showing you for the purpose of the video. I got a couple for the Grace. The Judy, I'm also uh, researching. And I'm pretty sure that I'm supposed to go from the Judy Y1 to the Y2. So let me look that up. The Judy 2 is a better Judy than the Judy 1. Okay. That might be reconnaissance. I got so a couple in the Irvin, a couple in the Shinden, a couple in the Randy. So this is my issue, guys. I feel like I might be a little fragmented on what I'm researching. I think I might have too many factories spread across too many um, different air frames. And I'm wondering if that's where my issue is here. So you can see I got one, two, three, four, five into the KI-43 2A Oscar and one, two, three, four, five into the Tojo, the 2A Tojo. Also got four into Peggy T because this gives the Imperial Japanese Army a decent torpedo bomber. I got three into the KI-43 for late war and a big investment into the Frank. I'm going for the KI-43A Frank because that aircraft is the, probably the best thing that the Japanese can get the soonest for the Imperial Japanese Army, which is a very substantial part of your air force, okay? So trying to get that as soon as I can. That's We'll talk about engines next. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six factories going into the George. This is the Japanese uh, Air Force uh, Navy fighter, but it's a bomber killer. It carries a lot of 20 millimeter cannons. The Francis is basically a replacement for the the Nels and the Bettys. Okay. And two factories into the 2S Francis, which may actually be a mistake again. I don't even remember what the 2S Francis is. Let's look that up. Uh, PY, let's just go all PY2S Francis. That is another night fighter. So I've got two factories going on that. That might be a mistake. So I want you guys to take a look at this and tell me either now or whenever you watch this. Am I too fragmented? Am I going too heavy into my night fighters? I think I might be. I've got like six factories uh, producing the Francis, and is that might be too many. I, I'm sorry, six factories producing night fighters. Is that is it that important? Do I need these night fighters that soon? I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Oh, one factory on the 2A Helen, and that one you basically get for free right off the start. And we're probably not going to be able to advance that very far maybe a month or two I maybe the, maybe by like July of 42 I'll have the 2A Helen mm. anyway so that's my R&D plan I don't know if it's the best R&D plan so tell me what you think about that 
Let's talk about aircraft production now. And this is where I have some more questions because I know in the next few months, there's going to be some new airframes coming aboard, coming along online. And I don't know how to manage this very well. So here's what I got. I got three factories currently producing 140 zeros a month. And the reason that I have that is because I've been expanding a lot of my Claude squadrons. Basically all of my carriers are fully equipped with zeros. I have a healthy pool and I'm also using a Kagi to resize some of my fighter squadrons to 93 aircraft. So it takes a lot of aircraft to fill those out. So I'm producing 140 zeros a month. I could probably drop that down a little bit once we, um, you know, kind of get into, uh, you know, I, where I need more factories freed up for other stuff. So my question is, what do I do then? Do I just reduce my zero production or do I increase these factory sizes to something else? My other question is, will the A6M2 um, be able to upgrade to the A6M3 or is that not even possible? Do I have to start over again for the M6, M3 and the 3A? So these are questions that I have. Like, I don't really know what to do with that because I don't think there's an upgrade path for the A6M2. Uh, let me see, A6M20 doesn't upgrade into the A6M3. So does that mean that I have to basically rebuild these factories for the A6M3? That would not be good if I had to do that. Because that would basically stop my A6M2 production period. Unless I just did two factories. So these are the questions that I have about upgrading when it comes time. The Kate... I'm producing none right now. I had it set to 40, but I've got a decent pool and I'm not losing that many. So I've stopped production on that. The Val I'm producing at 40 a month because I, I don't, I have a lot of bomber squadrons that don't have enough aircraft in them, like training squadrons. The Jake I'm producing 90 a month because I have a lot of float plane squadrons that need to convert over to these. The Glen I'm doing 10 a month. So that's one every three days just to keep a little pool for my, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the my my subs that have float planes on them, and it, once I get enough pull, I can convert other squadrons to these just for training. The Betty, I'm producing one a day because I just want to have a pull of those. The Mavis, I'm only producing ten a month. Our Mavis losses have been very low. Hmm. Now here's one that might surprise you. The two A Sally. Most people don't produce nearly this many. But I've lost so many Sallies in this campaign, either by cap traps or by flak or ops losses, that I am like running a huge deficit of two engine medium bombers. So I'm actually going to probably in increase this to 90 a month to get three a day because I'm so far behind on bombers. I even lost a lot of one engine bombers. So like I don't have enough bombers, period, to, to go around. Like my pool only has two. And I'm basically using two a day just to refill my squadrons that have lost aircraft. I have four factories currently producing the 1C Oscar. And I know that this is very inefficient. So I can probably drop one of these uh, soonish. Increase the factory sizes on the other ones. And drop one and convert it to something else when, it's, when I need it, right? Look at this. It's all over the place because I needed... Oscars now is just using factories that were not being used. I'm producing the the uh, the the Ki-46-2, which is my recon aircraft. I'm doing basically one every two days or 15 a month, just to keep up with my recon aircraft losses. I'm currently producing the Ki-57-1 Topsy. Now this uses an obsolete engine, the HA-5, and let me show you what that looks like for my pools. Where's that at? So I'm doing the one Topsy at about 14 a month just to use up the engines that use it. So the HA-5, right, is right here. And I've got 33 engines in the pool. That's about mm, three more months of production on the, on the Topsy 1. And after that point, I intend to discontinue production of the Topsy 1 and convert over to the Topsy 2. 
And, it, and I'm going to basically use that exclusively for my um, transport stuff. And let me show you what that looks like. So I'm currently doing the Topsy 1 to expend all these HA5 engines, which I'm not producing. And in a few months, uh, about... Uh, uh, oh, actually, it's technically available now. I could upgrade right now. That uses the HA31, which I am producing. So I just want to use up these these uh, engines right now while I can. There's almost no discernible difference in the performance of these aircraft. The, the Topsy 2 is a little bit faster, but for all intent and purposes, it does nothing. It just changes over to an engine that I'm already using. All right, so that's my aircraft production, and I'm sure there is some efficient inefficiencies here that I can capitalize on. But my big question is, how do I get to something like the A6M3 when there's no direct upgrade path, right? It can't, it can't upgrade. So I, I don't really know what to what to do with that. Anyway. Uh, that's it for that. Let's take a look at engines now. So engine production. I've got two of these pre-existing factories doing R&D for the Ayachi HA60. Two a day, and it's advancing 2% a day for the R&D. The only reason that I'm running these is because you start with these from the, from the get-go, and I didn't want to mess with it. HA-32s, uh, I've been struggling to keep up with the demand on these. You know what? I just realized something. I don't have HA-31 engine production. <laughs> that could be a problem for when I sw want to swap over to something that uses that, right? Oh, man. That What uses the HA-31? Do I need that factory? Let's see if we can figure that out. Um, I think there's a way to look up all the aircraft that use a particular engine. Let's see. Aircraft, engine production. No, that's not it. It's industry. There's a way to like sort it by what aircraft use what engines? I think it might be under... No, darn it. What is it? I saw a way that you can sort this so that it shows you all the aircraft that use a particular engine. Apparently, I'm using... HA-31 engines, and I need to know what uses that. Huh. I know that there's a way. Aircraft engine. Wait. Let's do this. Maybe that's it? Ah. Never mind. I won't waste your time on this. But I apparently need to make HA-31 engines because something's using those. And I need to have a production line on that. So that's something I can take away from this. I definitely need to start an HA-31 engine production line at some point. But then the question is, is where do I put it? What engine is going to give up a slot to do that? <laughs> I don't really know. Anyway, so I'm producing HA-32s and I'm barely keeping up with the demand because a lot of my heavy bombers or medium bombers use those. Like the Sally, I think the... The Betty does too. HA-33s, I'm not keeping up with the demand either. HA-43s are the late war engines, which I have four factories devoted to that research and development. I have two factories making about 120 HA-34s a month. So at, at that rate, I should have the engine bonus in about three more months, which should work fine. HA-35s, I have 
440 in the engines being made a month. I'm not quite sure where to go with these. If you guys know better, please let me know. But I'm making 440 a month and the pool's going up about 10 a day. Because I have a lot of aircraft that use these engines. And the HA-45, which is definitely a very important engine for things like the Frank and stuff like that. I have five factories working on that. So we've advanced the R&D a few months on that. We're going up about 5% a day. So we should have this engine by early 1943. So there you go, guys. That is my engine, aircraft, and R&D plan. And I think it's kind of a mess. I, clearly, I already see an issue here where I'm not making enough HA-31 engines at all. And I'm going to have a demand for those at some point. Aircraft production, there's a lot of inefficiencies here. So if you have any suggestions on how to improve this, please let me know. Because I'm going to need some spare factories here in a few months to make new engine types or new aircraft types that are coming out. I currently have no way of making those. So I kind of need to know how to condense this into and to make up space. I basically right now only have one factory that's not producing aircraft that that can be. Uh, um, uh, making nothing like the Nate is the aircraft I don't need to make. I've got plenty of those. OK. Yamaguchi, you said, don't you go to info aircraft production pool. So info aircraft production pool. That's fine. Oh, here it is. Uh, you're right. Thank you, Yamaguchi. This shows you all the aircraft that currently use a particular engine, right? So what am I making that requires these? Here it is. The Dina is using up my... HA31 engine pool. Yeah, sort by engine. Thank you. Thank you, Lamaguchi. Sort by engine. So it's the Dina production that's using up my HA31s. It's really the only thing that I need it for right now. Okay, I, I don't really need HA31s right now then. Why doesn't it show aircraft that I don't have? So the KI-57 uses that engine, right? Oh, okay. This is only showing aircraft that I currently have or are working on. It doesn't show aircraft that I'm not currently producing. All right. Hmm. So what do I have spare engines of? Let's see. Pool. The Hitachi and the HA. Okay. Did I say 440? I meant 420 on that. Hmm. Trying to see if there's any engines that we can use up here. B5M1K, I don't need those. Adam, you came in kind of late, man. I've already gone over everything. I'm basically done talking, so what I recommend for all you guys that are coming in kind of late, I've already gone through my whole aircraft production, my research and development, and my engine production before you got here. So when I end this video, go back and watch it and take a look at it. The, the short answer is I think that I am uh, running with a lot of inefficiency. And I don't really want to go over it again because I've already talked about it while basically nobody was here. But uh, I have a lot of inefficiencies in the R&D. I think I might be researching the wrong stuff. Okay, so that that's an issue. Uh, but to, to be to be determined, right? I got about six different aircraft researching night fighters, and I, that may not be the best option. Uh, aircraft, I have a pretty fragmented aircraft production system, 
and I'm wasting a lot of factories on small production runs and I need to find a way to maybe condense these. But one thing I need to mention guys with this is it takes supply to fix everything. And that's what I'm very worried about with making big changes right now is every time I want to upgrade a factory, there's an initial cost, right? So let's say I want to take the Oscar 1C up to 30 aircraft a month, right? Right off the bat, I have to pay 50 heavy industry points, 50 manpower, and 500 supply just to make the change, okay? I'm not worried about the manpower. I got tons of that. Heavy industry, eh. Supply, eh. Okay, but that's the initial investment. After that, to upgrade the factory, it takes 1,000 supply per day for every factory that I want to repair, okay? Now, to give you an example of how costly that is for the Japanese, let's take a look at the industry tab. Let's go to oil and uh, oil and uh, resources. Here's the resource history. I want you to take a look at this. Currently, I'm only making a net surplus of supply in the region of about 7,000 a day. So I'm barely breaking even on supply production in Japan every day. 7,000 net supply. The Allies make about 150,000, 200,000. It's ridiculous. The Allies got you 20 to 1 on what they can make in supply per day. Right? I make 7,000 right now as is. If I want to swap over a bunch of factories because I screwed up my research and development, I'm going to start burning supply to do it. Because every factory that I have to fix because I didn't do it right the first time cost me a thousand supply per day to repair and to change over. And the Japanese are already hurting for supply all over the map. I don't really have enough to go around. And so I rely on this me measly 7,000 a day surplus to supply the entire empire everywhere that I'm at. South Pacific needs supply. Philippines needs supply. Singapore needs supply. If I want to attack anywhere, that's going to require me to eventually ship supply out of Japan to keep that going. But if I screwed up my research and development plan and my industry production, I have to burn that surplus just to fix it. And I don't know that I can afford to. So I may have already kind of messed myself up by going into the wrong kind of stuff early on. And the reason, so Adam said, uh, Oscar 1Cs are paperweights anyway. That's true. But what do I have better right now? It's February 1942. And the best fighter that the uh, Imperial Japanese Army Air Force has is the Oscar 1C. I know that it's a crappy aircraft, but that's all I got. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be the Nate. So I know that I'm going to lose a lot of Oscars in combat because they're not very good. I have to replace those. So I have to run a large production of Oscar 1Cs just to replace losses. And on top of that, it's February, almost March 1942. I want to show you something here. Look at this. Look how many Nate squadrons I still have in 1942. There is a substantial, there's more Nates than there are Oscars at this point, even by March. I'm making 140 Oscar 1Cs a month because it's the best thing I got. And it's still not enough to keep up or to replace all these Nate squadrons. Now, some of these are in training applications. Okay. Some of these Nates are, are in uh, Manchuko, which is fine. Some of these are in Tokyo. Some of these are in places that don't really matter, and that's fine. They can use Nates all day. But a couple of these, like here in Singapore, I'm still flying Nates in Singapore in March 1942 because I don't have enough Oscar 1Cs to replace these. So I'm having a, I have a huge production run of Oscar 1Cs because that's all I got that the Japanese Army can use, which they outnumber my Japanese Air Force, uh, Navy squadrons two to one. Look at this. Two to one, they outnumber me, right? So I got to make a lot of Oscars just to replace the Nates so I can use them on the front line. I, you know, so I, that's why I have such a big production run of, of Nates right now. Or Nates. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm halfway through my 
gin and tonic and it's it's really kicking in here. I'm, I can't talk straight. But the, that as so you can see what the issue is here. I just have I think I my concern is I have a lot of inefficiency in my my production. So when this is over, which it should be over soon, I want you guys to go back and watch this again and look at what I'm doing and give me your feedback in the comments after you watch it. Oh yeah, Bradley, you know, she doesn't like it when I drink during the week. She's like, you're an alcoholic. You shouldn't be drinking during the week. You should drink with other people, not by yourself. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, well. I'm, I'm having a cheat night, okay? <laughs> She's not here. So I can, I can say that. I wouldn't say that she was here. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah, go back and watch this from the beginning when it's over. And help me identify my inefficiencies and take a look at my production and scrutinize it. My research and development. And tell me that I'm doing this wrong so I can uh, do it better. Now, Adam, you said that the fuel imports aren't ideal. Uh, can you explain what you mean by that? The fuel is not the issue in, in, in Japan. It's supply. Supply, supply, supply. And to, to a lesser extent... Uh, the other issue is getting resources in here. I don't. I don't mean to. I don't mean this to be a video about uh, industry right now, like the broader industry. But one of my biggest struggles right now is getting the appropriate amount of resources into Japan. Okay, it's actually more critical than the oil. If you look at this, I'm on a razor's edge here. I only have 74 day surplus of resources in Japan. We burn 79,000 a day. 79,000 a day. Um, I have to import a ton of resources into Japan to keep that going. So, Adam, just to confirm, the fuel is not used to create supply. The only thing that creates supply is resources and fuel. Supply is created by light industry and heavy industry. Heavy industry requires one point of fuel. Uh, what is it? Here, let's look at tracker. It'll tell you. Let's go to summary. So here you go. Economic multipliers. If you can take a look at this on the map. So. Um, heavy industry requires two fuel and 20 industry per turn. Every every. Heavy industry center needs two fuel and 20 resources, and you get two supply and two heavy industry points out of that input. Light resources require 15 resource to create one supply. All right, so yes, I technically you're correct. You do need fuel to create supply, but you only need two points of fuel for every 20 points of resources. So you can see right here, guys, um, Light industry and heavy industry require a huge amount of resources. Basically, 20 times and 15 times the amount of factories you got to create the supply output. Refineries also create a supply. So for every oil input, for every refinery, you need 10 points of oil and you get 9 fuel out and 1 supply out. So that's the other reason why it's important to keep oil going into the home islands. Because the whatever refineries are there also create supply. The most important resource you have in Japan is the supply. But you need a little bit of fuel, a lot of resources, and a medium amount of oil to keep it all going. So you, you may think that it's the fuel and the oil that are the most important. It's actually the resources because that is the biggest demand draw that I've got in the home islands. And we only have a 74 day surplus. So the bulk of my convoys going to the home islands are not carrying fuel and oil. They're carrying resources. A lot of people misunderstand that about this game. It's not the fuel and the oil that's that important. It's the resources. Take a look at this. Um, I need 79,000 resources a day, but only 7,800 um, uh, oil a day to keep everything running as is in Japan. For fuel, I only need 4,000 a day 
So I'm only running a deficit of 4,000 fuel a day in Japan to keep the industry running. And that's easy. So the fuel is not the issue here. Again, I wasn't intending to, to talk about this stuff in this video, but I'm already done talking about my aircraft production. So you guys can watch that after the fact. But since I got you here, Adam, we'll talk about resource production. And my biggest sources are as follows. Now, be, bear with me here. It's going to be a wild ride. Um, Sakhalin. Okay, you can see they make uh, 30 oil a day or 30 oil centers here. But resources, it makes 520 resources per day. No, that's not correct. It has 520 resource centers, okay? And 520 resource centers... Resource center out. So so it's 20 times 520. So it makes about 10,000 resources a day. So Sakhalin is a major uh, source for resources. Hokkaido also has a huge amount of resource production. Something along the lines of like uh, 2,000 resources a day. So S Hokkaido and Sakhalin are the one of the absolute biggest resource productions that I got okay so that's one of them and they all feed into Ominato and Hirosaki the other major resource center is going to be Manchuko and China so the way I have everything set up right now uh, the bulk of my resources uh, in China and Manchuko flow down to Fusan okay and from Fusan I use CS convoys to move that that resource that 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 kind of collects there, right? It, all of the Chinese and... So basically everything from here, mainland China and Manchuko, because I've set up the draw to make it do this, feed down into Fusan. And from there, I have multiple CS convoys that move it into Shimonoseki and Fukuoka. So China and, and Manchuko are a major supplier of resources. I also have very small resource production at Amani Oshima, Amami Oshima and Okinawa. I have single ship task forces moving that, that stuff there. Formosa produces a decent amount, about mm, 3,000 a day. I have a single CS convoy pulling 3,000 a day out of Formosa. The Philippines makes about 150 between Mindanao and, and Luzon. So about 150 resources uh, actually, maybe probably a little less. Probably about 100 resources a day come out of uh, the Philippines. Uh, right now, it's collecting in Manila and Batangas and Luzon and at Davao in the Philippines. Okay. All of this area here. So Burma, Thailand, and Malaya. All these resources funnel down into Singapore. Okay. And additionally, there is a lot of resources in the in the uh, Dutch East Indies. So there's some on Sumatra. There's a lot on these little islands out here. There's a little bit on Java. There's a fair amount on, on Borneo. So basically, the stuff in Java it just collects here and I ship it out. Celebus has a fair amount of resources which I ship to Davao. And all these other resource producing areas here in Borneo, Sumatra, and these islands... I ship via CS convoys to Singapore, and here's an example of one. Sinkep. You see I have a single ship uh, resource task force moving there. Bilton, Tobali, Pontianak, Bandra Masin. I'm pulling all that stuff and moving it to Singapore. And from Singapore, I'm shipping it back to the home islands because it's not flowing all the way from Singapore to Fusan. It's just not working that way. And so uh, I got two convoys moving about a hundred and about 110,000 uh, resources every two weeks from Singapore back to the home islands. And here's an example of one right here. This is a resource convoy that's moving from Singapore to Nagasaki. And it's going to deliver 61,000 resources, which is, by the way, not even a single day's production in the home islands. So you can see how critical it is to get resources back to the home islands. And the only reason I say that is because the Resources fuel heavy industry. The heavy industry fuels your aircraft production. It's all tied together. I, 
Here's a convoy that just arrived from Taihoku. And there's another one here that just unloaded from Singapore and it's heading back. And this one carried 55,000. So, oh, but there's more. I have more resources that I need to extract, right? Uh, another one is going to be Christmas Island. It has resources that I need to pull out of there. Really nothing in the South Pacific. There's a little bit at Noumea, but it I only haphazardly pull stuff out of there. It's not consistent. And then the other place that I actually go out of is Nauru, which has a pretty decent supply and Ocean Island. So there's about 100 resources available here. From there, I send them up to Ena Talk, And from Ena Talk, I ship them back to Yokohama. So... That in a nutshell is my resource production. It's it's all over the place, man. But I have to I have to outsource the resources from all these places. I right, here you go. Here's a task force coming in from NOE Talk carrying 15,000, 14,000 resources back to Japan. And all those sources I'm barely able to keep up with the demand in the home islands. And if you look at this chart here, let me show you this. Again, I meant this to be an aircraft production thing, but I've already talked about that. You guys can watch it at the beginning of the video when it's done. But now since you guys are here, I want to entertain you. Let's talk about it. Let's go back to the industry tab, oil and resources. Here's my resource history. Uh, right here, this is the tab um, that talks about resource imports and, ex and, and usage, right? And this is only... Um, this is only home islands, okay? The way I have my tracker set up is I have regions set up. So there's multiple different regions here. But the one that matters the most is the home islands, so Japan. So this is just Japan, home islands itself. You can see from the at the war when you start, you have to start with 5 million. And I got down to a low of 4 million. I burned up a million supply, uh, resources before I was able to start gaining it. And these green arrows mean you're gaining, right? So the red arrows means you're burning it. The green and air, green arrows mean you're getting a surplus. But even now and then, even with all those sources, I'm still burning it on some days. And that's going to be a day where the, the ships are in transit, they're loading up, or they, you know, or they're waiting for resources to transfer. I'm barely able to keep up with this, guys. But from the start of the campaign to now, I've gained a net of 1.2 million resources. But you can see all the different sources that I have to draw from just to keep this up. And it's the oil is easy, guys. The fuel is easy because we don't burn that much ex, uh, like a, a net loss per day. It's the resources that are killing me. Resources are killing me. And I know it says the oil has been burning a lot, but we're only burning like 4,000 a day. And we start with a, a, a pretty decent surplus. So... Now that I've captured so many bases in the Dutch East Indies, the oil is not going to be a problem. I can ship a ton of oil. Hi guys, I'm floating in oil and fuel right now. I don't think you realize it. We've been so lucky in this campaign, the amount of oil that I've captured intact. Like, I have more oil and fuel than I have tankers to move it. Which, I think Japan had that issue as well. Which is a good problem to have, right? Because we're going to build a lot of tankers, but... Oil and fuel, I can deal with it. It's the resources that's killing me. And I need all of this stuff to keep my aircraft production going. So Adam, you said you didn't expect a lot of small places to have a lot of resources. Yeah, there's a lot of little places all over the map that, that produce a lot of resources and you gotta figure out how to get it home. Raids on Hokkaido and raids on Sakhalin can be very damaging to the Japanese. If, if the allies had tried to do a carrier attack here and bombed a lot of my resources, they not only get strat points, right? Strat points right here, which are bad for me because they changed the denominator for the for the ratio. They get strat points for that, but they also take away my easiest resources to extract, which means I have to go further and further away, burn more fuel, burn more time. So I've been lucky that he didn't attempt to come into to the uh, home islands and do a raid early on, because some. People will send their carriers and do a raid on Hokkaido when the Japanese are pretty weak and can't really stop it. He didn't do that this campaign. And I don't think he's going to at this point because I'm wise to it and I'm prepared for it. 
and destroyers getting into Toyohara, right? I have a lot of convoys running in between uh, Shikuka and Toyohara going to Wakane, Sapporo, Sapporo, and, you know, basically they come out of Shikuka and Toyohara and dump into Wakanai, and then the resources at Wakanai flow down to uh, Hakudate and flow into Ominato, and then they distribute all through the home islands. Uh, but the, here's the thing. I, I know that a raid on on Sakhalin and Hokkaido are a thing. So I take plans from day one as a Japanese player to protect it. I've got two basic... I got two surface combat task forces set up here. Look at look at this look at this protection this protection that I've got. From day one, I put ships out here to protect against a destroyer raid. I've got Mavises here. Uh, guarding against surface vessels coming in. I've got picket ships out in the South Pacific, in the North Pacific right now. So I have a very extensive warning net from the, the very beginning of the campaign to protect against a, a raid by the allies. So that's why um, Macho didn't even attempt at this campaign because he knows that I'm ready for that because Helson did it to me and he caused me a lot of problems. So... I took very proactive steps the next time around to protect against it. So you can't really do this as the allies if the Japanese are ready for it, right? I I built up Obonato to a size 7 airfield. I put torpedo bombers here. I've got an air HQ here with torpedo ordnance. So I'm very well prepared to defend against a, uh, an allied uh, surface combat or a, air, a, a CV attack on the home islands from day one so you got to know that as your allied player if your japanese player is alert and ready a raid on the home islands early on is just going to end you getting your your carriers killed because he's going to be ready for it so if you're playing japan plan for it on day one and make sure your opponent knows that you're planning for it so he doesn't even bother with it like right now macho knows that i know about this so he's not even gonna try because he he's just gonna lose stuff and it's not gonna work but if you're very uh a complacent or a lackadaisical japanese player you can easily get caught off guard uh, like i did against helson because that was my first japanese campaign where he came in here and basically trashed about 50 ships before i could respond to it uh that'll never happen again so keep that in mind Deterrence is more important than the actual um, attacker defense. You guys got anything else for me? Uh, I, I basically talked about everything I want to talk about. I don't want to show you too much around the map because my videos are about a week behind right now. So this is actually the 27th of February and my videos are on the 20th. So I don't want to give away too much. I want you to watch it. A lot has happened. Mostly good. Mostly good. So I can't say that since Palambang fell, um, I feel like uh, things have been pretty good. I'll give you a quick uh, little sneak peek. Palambang is building up nicely. I've evacuated all of the combat power out of here. Okay. I just got basically minimal little garrison force here and it's it's nothing. Uh, the bulk of my troops are back in Singapore. If you can look at the AV here, all of my divisions have been safely returned to Singapore. Kido Butai is safe and sound and getting ready for the next big operation. And we've had some action, uh, some, some decent success in China, uh, some strange occurrences on the Philippines. Uh, that one destroyer make, oh. Bradley, I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to go ahead and give you a freebie on this since you're here. The destroyer did make it out of Fiji, right? The damaged one. And it is currently sitting in uh, Luganville, but it, it took a lot of damage getting there. Uh, and here it is. The Ayanami is alive, but it is so badly damaged that I'm afraid to sail it any further. So what I'm going to do, this is a secret. I'm moving one of my ARs. I'm moving one of my repair ships down to Luganville because 
we have the time to do it. And I'm going to use it to try to at least repair uh, the system damage to zero so that it can attempt to make this... Uh, I want to get the system damage and the engine damage down to the basically as far done as I can with the repair ship. And I'm going to have to slowly sail it back to the home islands. And I don't know if it's going to make it, but what we did do is safely get it out of Fiji. The other one, if you want to... Let me see if I can find it for you. I think the other one made it. Uh, no, that's not it. Let me find it for you. Oh, I think it's here. The Yugiri. Okay, check it out. The Yugiri is the other one, and I was able to I was able to get it out uh, to truck, and I'm repairing the system damage, and from there, I will have to ship it to the. Uh, home islands if I put it in the repair ship mode It'll get it down to uh, It'll take 42 days to get it down to something better So I'm not gonna bother. I just want to get the system damage repaired and then I'm gonna sail it all the way back to The home islands and repair it there the Congo did make it back safely and here's the Congo It's unfortunately gonna take a long time to repair. I have it on ship uh, pier side right now Just to get the system damage cleared up but the repair estimate in the shipyard is 151 days. That's a long time. So the Congo is out of action for a while. The last major ship to be repaired is going to be the Yamashiro, which ended up taking several torpedoes on the way home. It's got a repair estimate, once I get the system damage fixed, of 214 days. So the Yamashiro was out of the fight for most of 1942. And by the way, if you use Tracker, Tracker has a really cool thing called ship repairs. And I, you can sort it by system damage, by flotation damage. You can sort this however you want. So I typically sort by flotation since that's one of the most important things. So if you want to know like all the damage of all your ships quickly, you can go into Tracker and then from there, you can click on a ship and look at the history of its damage and repairs. So. Let's take a look at the Ayanami, which is the ship that's at Luganville right now. It took damage basically on turn 46, which was almost 40 days ago, right? It started with 69 flotation, but we got it down to uh, 56. And it took more damage. But remember, the ships can repair while underway. And this is currently where it's at right now. The reason that you see the repairs not going any further is that it hit the major damage limit, which can't be repaired at sea. And the only thing that can really be repaired is a, is a system damage at this point. Maybe a little bit of engine damage, but I love this screen and tracker because it lets you track the progress of repair. So let's look at the um, Congo, right? Here's the history of damage on the Congo. So you can see right now, we got it back to Yokosuka, or Yokosuka if you're one of those crazy Japanese people. And it's slowly repairing system damage, about one point per day. And once I get the system damage down to zero, I'm going to move it over to shipyard repair. Because shipyard repair is better at dealing with heavy damage, like the major damage. Anything that's not major damage is better repaired in shipyard mode. I'm sorry, correction. <laughs> um, it's better repaired in pier side mode and what I'd like to do is leave my ships in pier side mode until I get all of the major damage and the system damage to zero and then I move it over to shipyard so it's currently in pier side until I get all of the major damage repaired or minor damage and then it goes over to major damage and the same thing with the Yamashiro um, I basically have it in pier side mode because it's clearing out the minor damage and the system damage. You can see what it's doing here. Once I have that down to zero on system, I move it over to the shipyard. So tracker is really good for tracking that. What else you guys got for me?
I'm getting kind of hungry here. I want to go eat dinner, but I'm, I want to answer your questions before I go. I don't want to show you any more progress on the map. I want you to watch the videos for that because again, I've got about a seven day delay. It's not necessarily intentional. It's just because I've been busy with real life and I'm moving more turns than I can actually show you. Okay, so I'm going to end this now. You guys go watch it. Look at my aircraft production and give me your input either on Discord or my my video comments and I will look at all of it and see if I can improve my plan. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go eat some dinner now. I got some tri-tip to make. I will catch you guys on the next one. I appreciate you all for being here.